The Council will recall that the report of the joint investigation on Tigray issued by the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission and our office on 3 November found that all parties to the conflict, including the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, Tigrayan forces and Eritrean defense forces had committed to varying degrees human rights violations and abuses as well as violations of international humanitarian law and refugee law. Some of the incidents investigated could potentially amount to international crimes, including war crimes and crimes against humanity. Meanwhile, the conflict has continued with ongoing fighting beyond the borders of Tigray. Our office continues to receive credible reports of severe human rights violations and abuses by all parties. The, humanitarian impact of the, conflict is increasing. the lack of access has been compounded by harassment of humanitarian workers, including NGO workers, accompanied by widespread anti-humanitarian rhetoric. Attacks against medical facilities and other essential civilian structures are extremely troubling. The nationwide state of emergency announced on 2 November is leading to significant human rights concerns on a very broad scale. Notably, the state of emergency authorizes the arrest, search and detention of anyone suspected of supporting the Tigray People's Liberation Front and the Aroma Liberation Army designated terrorist groups in May 2021. This excessively broad provision has led to mass arrests and detentions of thousands of Ethiopians, including United Nations staff, and according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, at least 14 journalists. Most of those arrested are ethnic Tigrayans. While some of those arrested over the past six weeks have been released, we estimate that between 5,000 and 7,000 remain detained, including nine UN staff members. Many are detained incommunicado or in unknown locations. This is tantamount to enforced disappearance and a matter of very grave concern. Access by independent monitors has been a major challenge. Reportedly, many have been subjected to inhuman and degrading treatment and extreme overcrowding in addition to their prolonged detention without charge, access to lawyers, or any other form of due process. I also deplore increasing hate speech and incitement to violence by federal and regional authorities, as well as other public figures, particularly targeted against Tigrayans and members of the Oromo community. Like the nationwide sweeps, house arrests, and raids, this rhetoric in public speeches, broadcasting, and social media, including Facebook and Twitter, intensifies a climate of fear. The risk of increasing hatred, violence, and discrimination is very high and could escalate into generalized violence. This could have major implications, not only for millions of people in Ethiopia, but also across the region. Humanitarian workers must urgently be permitted rapid, safe, and unimpeded passage to assist all civilians in need in Tigray and other conflict-affected areas. I encourage all parties to pull back from a posture of war and for the sake of the lives and human rights of Ethiopia's people to immediately end hostilities without preconditions. Notably, all people detained under the state of emergency must continue to be treated fully consistently with international standards, including knowledge of the grounds of detention, as well as of any charges against them, and prompt and fair trial. Independent monitors, including the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, should be permitted access to all detention facilities. The onus is on the state to discharge its primary responsibility to deliver fair and independent proceedings 
that address the full range of violations identified, not only isolated individual instances, and to take into consideration applicable command responsibility. Without significant accountability efforts, an international mechanism could be an important complement.